Hi, welcome back to the structures uh, for lower secondary DNT package. Uh, and uh, so we get right into it. Right, for this particular module, we're going to cover introduction, uh, functions of structures, types of forces, and then the types of structures, and the different classifications of structures. And we're going to end the lesson with reinforcement of uh, how the structure is going to be. Right. So structures are around or everywhere around us. You can see from here, uh, there are some natural uh, structures like skeletons, crab shells, snail shells, trees, honeycombs, or the bees. Uh, then there are also the man-made structures like your bicycle helmets, your uh, bus stops, your chairs, your bridges, right, and buildings. Now, what is a structure? Structure is a supporting uh, system designed for minimal movement. It's made of members that work together as a team to withstand forces and loads uh, that they're designed for. All structures must resist force, support a load, and hold parts in place. If not, they will all collapse. Right? So what are the functions of structures? Right? We have four functions. Uh, containing, spending, supporting, and protecting. Right? So these are the four basic structures. Uh, uh, functions of structures. Supporting, all right. Basically, you want to support a load, all right. There's no use, it's useless if the furniture in the house don't support you, the buildings don't support the building, and it all collapse. Okay, so it's the buildings and the, the furniture must support the load, right? Containing, we have uh, metal shipping containers, we have packaging for eggs, we have takeaway packaging, we have drink cans. These all contain something. The kind of liquid inside or the food or, or the packaging, you know, uh, the products will be broken, okay? Protecting, uh, we use things like tents, all right, uh, to protect ourselves from the weather. We have corrugated cardboard where it protects the items from being damaged and of course your bicycle helmets which protect your head when cycling in case of a fall, right? And spending, right? So basically, uh, it's basically a big bridge that spans from point A to point B across something. Right, so there's always a gap between the two points uh, and we're going to connect something and then therefore we have a bridge or a span and allows people or water or pedestrians to cross across the obstacle. Alright, types of structures. We have two types of structures. One of them is a frame, uh, which is basically made up of different uh, parts, pieces of, uh, parts of different pieces and members together, they join together to protect and support uh, the, uh, the, the whole thing. And obviously, uh, examples of frame structures are bridges, homes, wire bridges. Uh, these are, they gather the strength from where different parts are joined together. And it consists of a framework that uh, provides rigidity and strength. So best framework uh, uses minimum a number of supports, uh, members to, to, to provide the, the strength and support. So shell structures, all right? Shell structures are structures that have an outer shell that provide the strength. And these can be used to protect or contain uh, of things, right? For example, the Sydney Opera House, you can see those are shell structures and these are the, 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 the shell, or for example, the skin gives it the strength and the rigidity, right? It can both be withstanding tension and compression, right? You have a chair, you have a tissue box and food containers. The, the load is spread across the whole, board, the whole shell and uh, you normally avoid sharp corners such as rectangular holes or what to, to prevent cracks through stress concentration. Right? So normally shell structure is a skin, it's a whole surface. Right? Now forces. Forces is a, is, a, is a quantity that is created by a load. So forces are present in all uh, structures and structures are designed to withstand the forces acting on them. Right, structural failure occurs when the, 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 the force is too high and the structures collapse and break down. So there are two types of forces, external forces and internal forces. Right? External forces are things that are being exerted on the, 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 directly onto the structure and internal forces are forces that, that develop within the structure. So uh, the external structures, uh, external uh, forces are known as loads. Okay, so we have two types, one is called a static load and one is a dynamic load. Static load is a force that has a constant uh, size, direction and position uh, within that structure. While a dynamic load is one where the force is changing in size, in direction and position.
position within that structure. Okay? So, for example, a, a static load is a dead load where the, the, the beam itself is heavy and it sits on that column. So, the, the columns are experiencing a, a dead load. A dynamic load. Loads that, uh, for example, is that in case that elephant walks across, right, it's going to change uh, in terms of moving from the left to the right or when there's a wind, when the wind blows onto the beam, the beam will uh, move or get affected by the, the strong wind. Right, so then that's a dynamic load or a live load. Okay, there are when a force acts onto a structure, there are going to be a few uh, outcomes. So we have things like compression, tension, bending, torsion, and shear. These are the five uh, ways that a structure can uh, respond in the, into the external loading. Right, so compression uh, is the force that squeezes the material, so you compress and it tends to get shorter. Tension is stretching, so like a rubber band, when I stretch it, all right, the rubber band will get thinner and longer. All right, bending, so if I have a certain object and I bend, all right, so one side will be compression, the other side will be tension. So it's a particular beam and I bend, so the top part will be tension, the bottom part will be compression. Shear is when I cause the material to slide past one another. Imagine I have a scissors and I cut, right? So I, I, I will cut and I force one part to move against the other part. Torsion is the twisting. So that's how I, when there's, there's, a, there's a strong force and I twist something and that is called torsion. Right, so we talk about reinforcement now. Okay, reinforcements, uh, we have this thing called gazette plate. Basically, the gasset plate is a structure at the top where I want to increase the effectiveness, uh, the effective surface of the, of the joint and therefore distribute the stress throughout the, 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 the beams equally. Right? Advantages is quite quick and easy to construct. The load is spreading. Uh, the plates will, will prevent the joint from twisting and it's very easy to make this. Okay? So those are examples of gasset plates. Braces. These are used uh, in car porch, uh, roofs, you know, to stiffen the structures. They are diagonal elements and, uh, and uh, well, brace are normally diagonal elements, beams are the horizontal elements and columns are the vertical elements. So the brace is the one that supports the, the columns and the beams and this is very good for preventing of bending. Right? For example, if you see the car there, the, 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 the diagonal uh, pieces are the, the braces. All right? uh, triangulation, triangular, uh, triangles are the strongest force, uh, shape right? and they cannot, uh, it cannot be twisted without one mem member or one of the members being stretched or bent. So in, in, a, in a very good example of triangulation is a bicycle frame. You can see that the bicycle frames are made of two triangles. All right? And in the illustration here, once you have the a triangulate a big strut or a, a, a tie in place, the loads, the, the whole frame is not is not easy to be tilted. Right? Same if I put gasset plates on the four sides, that also will prevent the the, the four uh, straight members from uh, rotating. So triangulation uh, does increase the uh, amount of loading that the, the structure can take. Right? Building a house in Amsterdam, you can see the roof is made of triangular. Uh, structures. So that is uh, one of the strongest uh, structure you can have. All right, truss, right? Truss uh, bridges. These are all the different truss bridges that you can see, and they are useful for uh, supporting the bridge. Right? Again, some more illustration of bridges. Okay, and truss bridges are very very useful because. Uh, with the minimum amount of uh, beams and, uh, and, and columns and uh, braces, you can actually have a strong bridge that can support and can last for a long time. Uh, for shell structures, uh, reinforcement, we normally use uh, ribs and you can see from the egg trays or some uh, disposable uh, food containers, these are ribs. Right? Ribs are used to stiffen and strengthen the sides, all right? And we can also be used uh, to fold them so to, to prevent uh, the, the, the shell structures from collapsing, right? Folding actually adds 
a thickness to the side to stiffen the, the normally the rim of plastic cups, right? So you can see that the, the edges are folded in order to give you the extra uh, stiffness. Other methods of reinforcement, uh, webs, uh, these are used to, uh, to give the back of the chairs or plastic files or whatever to give you the extra uh, force to, to spread the load and to resist uh, shear and uh, resist bending of corners. Honeycombs are used uh, in empty, uh, hollow uh, core structures to reduce the weight and to stiffen flat construction. Right? For example, in our wooden doors. Right? The other uh, methods of lamination, uh, uh, reinforcement and lamination, where we laminate things one top the other to stiffen the material. And normally, uh, for plywood, for example, we make sure that the uh, wood are laminated in a 90 degree uh, uh, method so that that will increase the strength in, in most directions. Corrugation is used uh, to stiffen uh, flat construction with folds and to absorb shock for packaging. Right, now that's the end of the structures uh, lesson. It's very, very short, it's very, very quick. Now, if any problems, please construct the uh, consult the teachers if there's any part that you are unclear of. Thank you so much.